What's going on ladies and gents, this is Bento and today I'm bringing you guys a Steam Controller tutorial, this time focusing on the motion controls. Now when the Steam Controller first came out, motion controls weren't really that uh, well known, although now they are a little bit, but um, I'd say it is a core part of the Steam Controller and so I hope you guys can learn a little bit from this. Um, I really like the motion controls for its aiming as well as its functionality. Um, especially in first-person shooter games like Borderlands 2, for example. Um, lining up headshots can sometimes be a little tricky with the trackpads, or even just a right stick in general. But with the motion controls, they offer a little more precise aiming, so lining up headshots actually is a lot easier than usual. Um, granted, it's not going to be as precise as a mouse, but it can get pretty close at least. The other thing is that um, if you were to tie the motion controls to somewhere else, um, this basically lets you free up your fingers. So let's say in Dead Space 2, for example, you're aiming and trying to uh, cut off necromorph limbs. Um, that means your right thumb won't be so focused on uh, moving the camera. And so you can actually aim freely and still use powers like kinetics, uh, telekinetic powers, as well as the slow motion time. And something handy I think you could use for the motion controls is flight simulators. I think it's actually really fun to try, especially for Elite Dangerous, to pilot your ship around just using motion controls. So to actually customize your motion controls, all you have to do is go to this symbol on the configuration menu. Once you access that, you'll be given your style of inputs to choose from. Today we'll talk about the mouse, because I think it's one of the best ones to use for motion controls. And I think you'll also be using it more commonly in most of your games. I'll go through each of the different functions and explain how you guys can customize it, as well as show you some gameplay so you have a better idea of what it looks like. So the first thing on the list is your gyro enable button, and what this allows you to do is activate your motion controls based on how you want to. So by default you could always have it on, or you could activate it via the grips, the bumpers, the trackpad, or the triggers. Next is sensitivity. So this will affect how fast your motion controls move. Higher sensitivity meaning you'll have faster movements, and lower sensitivity means you'll have slower movements. Next we have rotation. Now rotation is meant to affect your vertical and horizontal movement of your motion controls by changing the horizontal alignment of your steam controller. You can do this by tilting it left and right and changing the angle. However, I did not find any changes at all to my uh, motion controls whatsoever. So this might be a current issue, but as it stands, rotation does not seem to work at all. Next, we have acceleration. So similar to mouse acceleration, this will affect the speed of your faster motion movements. So higher acceleration means it'll occur a lot faster and lower acceleration means it'll occur a lot slower. Next we have gyro lean bindings for the left and right, and what this will allow you to do is actually select an input from the mouse, keyboard, or gamepad to actually activate whenever you roll the controller left or right. Note that if you do have gyro enable button active, you have to have that activated first before you can use the lean functions. Next is mode shifting, and this will actually allow you to activate a second style of input for the motion controls whenever you have a button pressed. Next is haptics intensity, sort of similar to vibration on a typical console gamepad. The Steam controller will actually give you tactile feedback whenever you're moving your motion controls. Next is Invert Vertical Axis, and as its name implies, it'll essentially swap your up and down motions. Now on to the advanced settings, we have Sensitivity Vertical Scale. And similar to Sensitivity, this will only affect your up and down movements relative to your horizontal. Increasing sensitivity means you'll have faster movements vertically, and decreasing sensitivity means you'll have slower movements vertically.
Next is trigger press mouse dampening. And what this will do is actually decrease your motion movements whenever the left and or right trigger is pressed. Following that, there is a bar determining the amount of dampening. Moving it to the right means more dampening, and moving it to the left means less dampening. Next is smoothing. So similar to mouse smoothing, this will filter out noise and jitters from your motion controls. Increasing it means more filtering, and decreasing it means less filtering. Next is gyro steering axis, and this will affect your horizontal movement based on whether you want a yaw style of movement or a roll style of movement. Note this will affect your lean bindings and it'll effectively turn it off if you do choose the roll option. Next is gyro lean point, and this determines how far you have to roll the controller in order for the lean bindings to occur. Increasing it means you have to tilt the controller a little more, and decreasing it means you have to tilt the controller a little less. Next is minimum movement threshold. This can kind of be seen as sort of a filtering of smaller uh, motion movements. So by increasing it, you would need to have larger motion movements in order to actually move your controller, and less meaning that you don't have to move it as much. This is only really utilized if the game really um, clamps or filters your uh, mouse style of input. Lastly, we have Invert Horizontal Axis, and as its name implies, you're essentially swapping your left and right horizontal movements. So that's it guys, I hope this tutorial gave you a better understanding of how to customize your own motion controls. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.